You don't need a dedicated camera to take decent photographs. You'll be surprised what you can get out of a simple smartphone camera. Hi, I'm Greenpants, and I'll show you how with my Sony smartphone. Now, the easiest way to start the camera is by holding the camera button. And this, re this presents you with the viewfinder in Super Mario Auto mode. Now, you've got a few options, but there's nothing too fancy. For example, you can change the flash settings, switch front facing camera, or there are just a, a few other settings over here. Um, I, I just generally uh, keep these off because they're not really interesting to me. But if you, for example, want to change the aspect ratio, then you can do it over here. That's basically the only uh, useful setting in this settings menu. Now, if you want to be serious about photography with your smartphone, then it's useful to switch over to manual mode. Because over here you got much more manual control. Like over here, you can see the C modes. Um, the C modes actually only work when you are shooting under 20 megapixels, so let's say 8 megapixels or lower, as you can see over here. Now these uh, C modes, they actually, the name kind of implies what they actually do. So for soft skin, for example, your skin becomes softer. Now the only useful scene that I uh, find is the night scene which makes the night shots much clearer, much more detailed, because it lowers the shutter speed and the ISO so that you still get a decent image. But if you instead uh, were to use Superior Auto Mode for night, for night images, then you will find that they are uh, way uh, overset, overexposed, actually. Now, the next setting over here is the um, exposure compensation and the white balance settings. Uh, the exposure composition is actually really useful in example like over here where you have both uh, a dark scene and a light scene like outside that's really light and over here this tiny hedgehog is actually really dark and what you may want to do is increase the exposure composition to such a level that your subject your main subject is is actually still uh, in focus so say over here if you take this photo then it's it's pretty good actually, instead of by default if you take this photo this is what you would have gotten in superior auto mode as well this photo, this is just mm, actually way too dark as opposed to this one which is way better so that's kind of a tweak to uh, to get better images in general now over here we have the white balance settings and this is actually really useful for manual mode that you really don't have any control over at superior auto mode because superior auto mode generally picks the wrong uh, white balance settings but the same holds true if you keep this to uh, auto white balance settings so if you if you see that the image in the viewfinder is actually either too blue or too, too dull in color then it's really useful to check if you can improve the colors by changing any of these white balance settings like over here, if if I choose, for example, sunny, then the images become a lot warmer, and that's actually what people generally prefer in images. So actually, if you uh, this new little trick over here, if you change anything from the default settings, then you'll see that this icon actually then has blue uh, uh, settings that you can see over there. If you change it back to default, then it becomes white. So if you have changed something, and you just don't know anymore, you can see that quickly by looking at that icon over there. Now then you have the flash settings and the front facing camera, but the most important part is under these extra settings. So I generally uh, shoot in at 20 megapixels instead of 8, but then if you choose 20 megapixels then you don't have any control over the C modes anymore. And the other thing is if you pick 20 megapixels, or actually 50 megapixels, that's a different aspect ratio, if you choose uh, this um, resolution, then you can't uh, shoot uh, HDR images either. So that's actually actually really inconvenient, but I don't know why Sony did that, but I guess we'll just have to live with it. Now, the most interesting setting over here is the ISO setting. The thing about ISO, ISO actually really improves the image if you can set it properly. Now, the thing about the ISO is that you should keep it as, keep it as low as possible, so that the image is still not too dark, so the image is still clearly visible. 
Um, if, for example, if you were to choose an ISO of 800, then you will find that images are really noisy. So the ISO is basically the sensitivity of the uh, sensor. If you choose an ISO of 50, then at outside in sunlight, photos are generally really uh, well well lit, and the exposure isn't too um, the, ex the exposure time isn't too low either. So then you can still uh, quickly snap images. However, the thing is that if you decrease the ISO indoors, then generally, uh, with the slightest movements, you still kind of get blurred images. So you really have to be careful with the ISO. You have to set it as low as possible as to still get images that are not blurred and that are uh, bright enough. If I take this image over here again, then if I zoom in here, You'll see that the image is the image is rather detailed. If I look at this image like this, then it's it, it's it's slightly noisy, but yeah. Another uh, interesting option is this focus mode. Focus mode uh, is by default set to single autofocus, as you can see by this square over here in the middle. In this case, it always focuses in the middle of the image. But what's more useful is, for example, multi-autofocus. This is kind of like what you see in more expensive cameras, where it just focuses on the point in the image at one of the five dots that is the closest by. So if I, for example, if I for example, want to take an image of this hedgehog again, then it should focus on the closest subject over here, as you can see, by the dot, by the square that has become blue. It will focus actually on the closest subject. And that's usually what you want. Now, some other interesting focus options are, for example, face detection, which the name already says what it does, touch focus, and object tracking. And object tra tracking is actually really interesting because you can, uh, it's, it's basically touch focus, but if the object actually moves, then you see that the focus point actually moves along with it. But it's it doesn't always properly work, so I generally just keep this off. I, I generally uh, have this set to touch focus because I then can clearly pick where exactly I want the image, uh, the camera to focus. And then we have metering, which is well, basically it says where it should uh, pick the light source from. Basically, it's kind of a vague explanation, but if we use spot, then then it, uh, you can see that it exposes very drastically according to what uh, the, um, the, sp the exact spot in the middle, how bright that is. So if I focus over here, then you see that everything is way too light. If I focus at, at the back here, then everything is way too dark. And that's basically done by the metering. And I just generally keep this to center because that usually gives the image a pretty good overall brightness so that nothing is too dark or too light. And then you have the image stabilizer which is actually really useful but uh, since I'm usually uh, taking images with a radius steady hand I don't really find this all that useful. But it is really really useful in video mode however. I always use it in video mode. And then you have more settings and here, here is where it gets even more interesting. Like, I always have geotagging on because it doesn't require any data, it just uh, uses the GPS. And it I didn't really degrade battery life all that much either. But then I do get most of my images with a geotag, which is useful for, say, later on, if I want to check where each photo was taken. And more interestingly, actually, is the data storage, something that's probably overlooked often. But if you see that this image over here that it doesn't really load all that quickly after you've taken a shot then you may want to check where you are storing your image because if you if you're storing it to the SD card and your storage uh, your SD storage is actually slow for example you bought a very cheap card then you may consider switching to the internal storage instead so I think that's pretty much it for the manual controls so basically, if you just keep track of the ISO, which uh, that's actually kind of weird from
from for the software here. If you change if you change anything like the resolution and then choose a C mode or whatever, then if you go back to 20 megapixels, then the ISO will have changed back to auto mode. So that's actually really inconvenient. But the thing is, if you just keep track of the ISO, if you set the ISO as low as possible to still get a decent, decently bright image and non-blurred, then th that's the way how you usually get the most detailed image out of your camera. And one more thing, if your ISO reaches, if, if, you, if you have to set your ISO like above 400, then it's probably not useful anymore to take photos at 20 megapixels because to be honest, the 20 meg megapixels are, don't really have all that much detail, and it actually really only uh, goes to show at 50, at the ISO of 50. Because if you choose any other ISO, then the image becomes so noisy that they really, these images at 20 megapixels really don't have any added detail anymore over something with 8 megapixels, for example. So there you have it. Now that we've gone through the basic controls of your camera phone, you may be questioning, does this really help me to take amazing photos with my phone? Well, not necessarily. This is because photography isn't all about the camera. It's mostly about the photographer itself, and their idea is to create a photo that is worth sharing. This is also why such a tiny camera from your phone can still be such a powerful tool for photography. The basics that we've just covered allow you to think more about how you're taking a photo. And once you take your time to think about your photo before pressing the shutter button, you've already entered the realms of more serious photography. And from there on, it's only going to be more fun.